Hi folks, let's experiment with a heat shrink tool holder. This is a tool holder from Maritool, and this is really cool. Heat shrink is not new to the CNC machining world, but it's another technology that's becoming more accessible to folks like us in smaller shops. So what is heat shrink tooling? Heat shrink tooling is really two different things. One, it's the tool holder itself, which is what holds the tool, but it's also a machine, and the machine is the key part that heats up the tool holder, allowing the bore of that tool to open up by just a few tenths, and when it does so, the tool is able to drop in, tool holder cools back down, and it's an awesome way to hold your tools, almost like black magic. We were excited to test a heat shrink tool holder. We had originally had Maritool put a tool in for us, but then we really wanted to film showing how the machine works. So Maritool was nice enough to let us borrow the machine here that we're opening up. Heat shrink tool holder, normal state, it's cold. We take a look, this is a .499 gauge pin. I have an undersized set, and so most undersized sets are two, up to two tenths under, and sure enough, we mic this down. They're taking basically all of that two tenths, 0.4988, one thousandth under half an inch. So does the 499 gauge pin fit? Yep, it does. Again, we're cold. Half inch end mill does not fit. That's where the induction heater comes in. So if you've ever seen a bearing heater, you literally is the awesomest way to convert electricity into heat. So with that coil inside of this housing around our tool holder, I'm going to hit the heat button and it is going to dump a lot of heat into that really quickly. I've got a little timer countdown clock and when that gets to zero, this is amazing. That bore has opened enough up enough for me to drop that tool in. If that's not magic, that's about as close as possible. Just awesome. And within seconds, it's out. Now you do need to let the tool holder cool down. You don't want to stick a hot tool in your spindle uh, and you don't want to touch this either, but it's already cooled down enough to hold that tool in. That's awesome. So when you're done with that end mill, you need to swap it out, you need to change it, you broke it, same process in reverse, but here's the cool thing. These induction heaters are sized large enough and correctly enough to be able to heat the tool holder quickly enough so that it swells open, it expands open before the heat soaks through the holder and heats up your tool inside. Because if that happens, then you're not gonna be able to pull it out because they're both expanding. So that's why this is really tricky to do for, on the DIY style. We've seen guys have done it with map gas torches where literally they can use a torch uh, but you've got to heat it up really quickly and you've got to try to heat it up evenly around it. That's what makes it nice to have the machine. So ready to pull this tool out, hit the heat button, count down. You can see a little bit of the smoke coming off. Boop, pull the tool right out. So cool. First time I saw one of these, I think it was uh, IMTS, actually card to our IMTS video here. My question was, well, how many times can you do this? How many times can you heat and cool the tool holder. And the answer that the vendor, I don't remember which booth we were at, but the answer that they gave us was thousands of times. Like it's basically not a limitation of, of the functionality of the product. That's cool. So what are the benefits? Why would you ever move to heat shrink? Well, first of all, the gripping power around the tool is awesome. It's just tremendous. Here's the other really nice thing. You can often get a much smaller diameter of the tool holder itself near where the end mill is. And this means you can reach smaller details or poke the tool into smaller holes compared to say the larger diameter that's required on something like this ER32 end mill holder. One of the other benefits is you have incredibly low run out because of the nature of how it's expanding and heating and then cooling that metal around it. It's the total indicated run out is often as low as it ever gets. They're balanced better for really high RPMs. That can be really great for small diameter tools. Having that low run out, having the really high work holding can really help with both tool life as well as part quality and surface finishes. We were inspired by uh, Eric over at Avant Manufacturing. I actually just had the chance to meet him and hang out with him at Autodesk University. Really good dude. He put out a video doing some pretty crazy testing on the Maritool holder. We're not gonna spoil the results, so click here for a card to check out Eric's video. 
I thought what we would do is we pulled in the Meritool T into Fusion 360, and we'll make this file available to download a card here or link in the video description, but we're walking through four different recipes to see just how hard we can push this tool on our Haas VM3. We really wanted to film this without coolant, but coolant does three really important things. It lubricates the cut, it cools, and it helps our chip evacuation. I thought this might fail, and it sure enough, it did. Uh, I think this was at 15,000 RPMs, or about 2,000 feet per minute, and 6 thousandths of an inch per tooth, or about 270 inches per minute. That's about 0.15 millimeters per tooth feed rate, or 6,800 millimeters per minute. We tried to switch the tool ourselves. That does not work. The, one of the ways heat shrink tooling works is the differential and thermal expansion of the tool steel that the holder is made of in the carbide. You've got to heat the tool really quickly, and that has to do with the functionality of the induction heaters used. Blowtorch or a smaller induction heater, you can usually get the tool in really tough to get it out. So uh, we'll let the folks guess in the comments below how we got the tool swapped. First cut. 268 inches a minute, 100% of the tool diameter as the depth of cut, 20% as the width of cut. That's about 13.4 cubic inches a minute. It should only be about four horsepower. Here are the metric equivalents. We're just getting warmed up here, folks. By the way, we offer this whole sheet to download on the speeds and feeds section on the new NYC CNC website. Great way to go through starting recipes as well as basic speeds and feeds calculation, including drilling, chip thinning, and more. Next recipe, starting to get a little beefier, 357 inches a minute, stepping up to 25% width of cut, just about doubling the cubic inches of material removal to 22, still under seven horsepower. Third cut, now we're cooking, 447 inches per minute, 28 cubic inches of material removal, actually still only a little over eight horsepower, so really well within the operating parameters of the VM3. And finally, same 447 inches per minute, stepping up to a 40% width of cut, 44 cubic inches a minute, which is about 13 horsepower, no problem at all. So the other thing that's nice about this Meritool holder is they've got these stops. So you can thread a quarter 28 rod into here, then this threads into the end of the tool. So by having a reference stop down there, it means when you swap your tools out, you're gonna have the same amount of tool stick out, which is really nice. You should absolutely still touch it off. I would guess it's repeatable to within a few thousandths of an inch, but what's important is just making sure you've got consistent stick out for fixturing and, and avoiding collisions, especially when you're doing stuff like fourth and fifth axis work. Folks, thanks for watching. We had a lot of fun filming this and testing this. We don't have a heat shrink machine, uh, and unless you've got one or a neighbor machine shop that's happy to uh, offer to let you for a small fee or barter, uh, go swap tools as needed, it's going to be tough for us to implement this. We may think about uh, picking up a machine, and we have pulled out an ER32 once when we were really hogging out material. So it's interesting to me. We'll keep you posted on how we continue to think about how we tool up and fixture and work hold uh, with the machines in our shop over the coming year. Thanks for watching, folks.